We are back again with another segment of How uh, Can You Say That? And I think this is our 16th segment. I think it's 17. Okay, our 17th segment. Could be 18. Is it 18? Maybe? Said the wrong segment to see if other people in the room were present. Present here. Anyway, tonight our topic is anxiety. And usually anxiety and depression and many other emotions <clears throat> can be experienced and people are often not sure what they're feeling. Also panic attacks. So tonight, John and I are going to discuss this topic as to matures and hopefully we'll shed light on some areas that might help someone. Did you say two amateurs? Is that what you said? Well, if you're a professional. Of course I'm a professional. Okay. You want to consider yourself an amateur? That's fine. I consider okay. myself to be a trained professional. In the field? Well, I am. So let's get into it. And by the way, I didn't include depression in this. We were talking about anxiety. Depression would be a whole other segment. So. But one of the one of the one of the triggers for anxiety is depression. Oh, are you the expert now? I did my homework. Oh, so you're the expert. I okay, know. so then I'll just defer to you. Okay, I guess you know better. It's the right word. I'm not an expert, but I did a lot of research because I wanted to make sure I was not sitting here conveying erroneous information that could hurt people oh i do that i do that but it, about anxiety what we're going to try to do is also give people some strategies and how to deal with anxiety because we're pointing out maybe some of the triggers of anxiety and and um and result of anxiety but we also have to provide some ideas and suggestions on how to manage anxiety so that someone actually gets something useful out of the podcast but can i ask you a favor please what is that Please don't make direct eye contact with me because I have this giant pimple on my forehead and I'm a little self, uh, self-conscious self of it. Well, John, it's not your pimple that bothers me, so let's not even mention it. No, to see, I wasn't sure if it was a pimple, but I think it is because what happened the other night is I went to go to the bathroom and I went to go lift up the toilet seat and I bent down and uh, my wife left the cabinet to the vanity open and I slammed my head into the cabinet door. So I thought it was just like a bad bruise on my head, but apparently it's not and there's more to it. And you know what the problem is? I put Clearasil on it to try to cover it up a little bit. And Clearasil used to have... You ever use Clearasil? You don't, you don't have any acne, right? Let me see your face. Can I see your face, please? Turn around, let me see your face. I just want to see if it... No, you have perfectly clear skin. So I've suffered with acne since I'm a teenager. And Clearasil used to make this, uh, the ingredients used to have sulfur in it. It was a very effective Clearasil. But now they change the ingredients and it doesn't work as well. It doesn't have sulfur. But the problem with the sulfur one is it's very orangey. So not only did I put the orangey Clearasil on, I thought you would make it make, like thinking that I'm giving some sort of shout out to Donald Trump because I made my forehead a little bit orange. I didn't want you to think that was like a, a trigger to set you off about Trump. I think we've had this conversation about Trump, Jonathan. So I don't even know why he's coming into this. Because you always say he's an orange man and I have an orange spot on my head. I didn't want you to think I was trying to trigger you about Trump. That's all I'm saying. Do you have eyes? Two. When you look at him, what color do you see? A little bit orange. A little bit orange, depending on the lighting. Anyway, I think at this point, before we waste more time... We should really explain what anxiety is. And based on my research, anxiety is a feeling of dread and uneasiness. It might even cause someone to sweat, feel restless and tense, and to have rapid heartbeats. Oh, that pretty much sums up the way I feel when I'm sitting around you doing the podcast. I was just going Very to anxious. Say, the only time I experience these <laughs> symptoms are when I'm in close proximity of the person on the podcast with me. Yeah, well, that's mutual. I have the same thing. But you know what's interesting about anxiety? I was listening to this, um, we'll call it a sermon from this uh, rabbinical figure. And he said something very interesting. He said, so much anxiety that people have are worrying about problems that they don't actually have. And when you think about it, it's really true. Because what are people worried about? Worried about, oh my God, one day I can get cancer. Oh my God, one day I can get a brain tumor. But they don't actually have it. So don't you find that interesting that most of the anxiety is caused by things that don't exist right now, but people are worried might happen? So I had kind of a solution for that. You want to hear? 
you look so completely disinterested. You're wrapped up in your own notes. You have no interest in what I'm saying, but I'm trying to convey a point here. If, in fact, we are anxious about things that don't actually exist and that are not problems right now, then why should that cause anxiety? Shouldn't it, we look at it to cope with that anxiety? Shouldn't we be excited instead of anxious? Meaning, I don't have cancer. I don't have a brain aneurysm. I don't have all these medical problems. I should be excited. Why is the default option that I'm anxious about something I don't have as opposed to excited that I don't have it? Think about that. Yes, because you're thinking about it. People who are just living life a lot of times will just experience their emotions. They don't sit there going, oh, why am I thinking I have this? I really don't have it. You know, it's easy for someone who is sitting in our seat talking about this to say what they should or shouldn't do. No, but I'll give you an example. Like my mother, my mother has a medical condition. We talked about it. She has uh, Parkinson's. So do I sit around anxious that I'll get Parkinson's one day, which maybe it's genetic, I don't know. No, I sit around thinking how excited I am that I don't have Parkinson's. So I don't get anxious about it. I get excited about it. It's the opposite. So my point is I'm bringing out a, a thought process that someone can alter their mindset to say, instead of being upset or anxious that I could get something bad, be happy and excited that you don't have it and let that make the anxiety subside. Isn't that sort of a reasonable thought process? I guess. <laughs> I guess that's the best answer that you have. I'm bringing up something very important and something that is no, a tool. Okay. Jonathan, anxiety is a medical condition. It's not, it's a mental disorder. Um, it's not, I don't know about that. It's more of a chemical, I think it's more of a chemical thing. Research. People who suffer from regular anxiety have a mental disorder. Well, you're talking about like deeper anxiety, like clinical deeper anxiety. I'm talking about just the regular everyday person that doesn't have, that just gets anxious about, I'm not talking about like a hypochondriac that's crazy about medical stuff or someone that's off the deep end. I'm talking about just a regular person okay. that doesn't have mental issues that just like, you know, like somebody that has a lot of money. They walk around thinking to themselves, I'm sure, a lot like, Wow, how lucky am I that I'm so comfortable? I'm I'm so happy. But they don't say, oh my God, what if I lose all my money and I have nothing? Like, why can't we just be kind of happy where we are and not have anxiety about something that might happen, could happen, may never happen, possibly not even an option to happen? Why is the default option anxiety instead of excitement? That's my question. Do you have an answer for or a thought no, on that? You usually have answers for everything. So why don't you give us the answer? No, I don't have an answer. I mean, I'm not an anxious person necessarily. I mean, I do get, it's like if, if every time I got in the car, I'm like, oh my God, I'm so anxious. What if I get pulled over and I get a ticket? No, my, that's not my, my default option is not that. My default option is, okay, I have a destination to go to. I'm driving. Let's see what happens. It's, but there are people that, you know, people that have anxiety are always assuming something bad. Why not be anxious about something good? Oh my God, I'm playing the lotto. I, I may win. This is great. Instead of being all upset and nervous or, Concern that something bad. Why? Why is the default option bad as opposed to good? I guess that's question number one. And question number two is again, just shift the mindset and have the mindset, the default option, the excitement that the bad thing didn't happen to you, as opposed to the anxiety that the bad thing may happen to you. That's all I'm saying. Are you done? No, I can keep going. I was giving you an opportunity to respond. Okay, so this is what I'm thinking also about anxiety. I think a lot of anxiety, I think people that are anxious tend to be people that are less believers in God. Do you want me to elaborate on that? Of course. <laughs> because a person that believes in God believes that eventually God will take care of them and make it all work out, which gives you some sort of mental comfort and peace of mind that something terrible is not going to happen to you because why would God allow that to happen to you? Now, that doesn't mean God-fearing people don't have bad things happen to them. Of course they do. But then they default to always, well, bad things happen for a reason. In other words, it's like if something bad happens, let's say I buy a, a stock and the stock goes to zero and I lose all my money, right? So I'm thinking to myself, oh my God, that's so terrible. Why would God do that to me? I don't understand. But if I say to myself, wait a second, obviously... I lost all that money in that stock for a reason. And maybe at some point down the road, I'll figure out and I'll see why 
that happened, then maybe some good will come of it. If that's sort of your attitude, it's like getting stuck in traffic. Why am I stuck in traffic? It's terrible. I got to get to where I got to go. But maybe if I wasn't stuck in traffic, I would have been killed in the car accident two miles up. And it's a good thing I wasn't there. So I think, again, another strategy for dealing with anxiety is to look internally and say to yourself, do I believe in God? And if the answer is yes, then maybe put your mind at ease a little bit that maybe God will work things out for you and take care of you. And some of these horrible things that you think will happen maybe won't ever happen because God doesn't want that for you. Okay, what else? <laughs> I'm not running a one-man show here. I'm I'm trying to give some... I'm the moderator, John. You like to John. hear yourself. I love you, John. John. You like to hear yourself? No, no, I, I want you, you to participate. I'm, I'm... No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Go. Say something. Okay. Well, so another thing that might um, might affect anxiety, and you tell me what, the, what, what you think about this, diet, what people eat. You think that has any impact on anxiety? Whether yeah. okay, so talk about that. You're a you're a medical person. I'm not. That's not my area of expertise. Talk a little bit about how diet and what you consume may affect mental health and your level of mental stability or anxiety. No medical background, but I'm not an expert on. Do you have any feedback or anything you like that? Anxiety should have coffee. Just well, just coffee. What about sugar and sweets and things like that? They need to sleep. They need to exercise. Um, <laughs> yes, and what? You, we don't take naps during the podcast. We're participating here. Raise your hand. I'll call on you, and you'll participate a little bit. Go ahead. I'm having some paralysis. <laughs> paralysis or anxiety. Oh. <laughs> now, I did read something about anxiety treatments because, obviously, the... Again, the default option for people that have anxiety, like many, many medical conditions, is let me go to the doctor and he'll prescribe something for me, which in and of itself, I think, is another big problem. People being overprescribed medications um, to deal with problems as opposed to trying to work them through in their head. I mean, obviously, in extreme cases, medication is something that's important. But um, I did read something about a natural remedy, which is somewhat x-rated do you think maybe i shouldn't say it or you think it, do we have mostly adults that listen say john you never have filters why are you filtering tonight because well, my kids listen to this so maybe it's not appropriate for me no, to say no. this well you know your kids so i can't tell you to all right so you may this may end up on the editing floor but um anything to edit because you don't what <laughs> you mean whatever i say is just going to remain there yes as a as an eternal Yes. Memorialized you're, statement. You're an adult. Okay, I'm going to say it. I'm going to hope that most of our audience is over 21 or 18. And uh, this is what I read. Now, I am not saying there's any medical um, justification for this. This may have been written by a very disturbed, um, undersexed individual. But I read as a natural, can't even say it without laughing, as a natural remedy to anxiety. That if a woman performs a certain um, sex act on a man with her mouth and consumes what comes out of it three times a week from the same individual, that that, uh, let me finish, that that is supposed to be a natural remedy for anxiety and depression. For some reason, the consistent... No, 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 no. no. No, no, I said it may have written, been written by, I didn't say it's accurate. I'm saying it's written by possibly a very disturbed man that was trying to help out other men that have anxious wives be like, look, 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 I did research on Google. Look what I came up with here. You have to start doing this three times a week and only with me. I'm not saying it's not true. I'm just I saying I read that. Research and I did not see that. Well, I'm just telling you what I read. I didn't make it up. I'm not I'm starting to think you may have. I'm not that disturbed to come up with that. But that, I really did read that that's a natural remedy. Why don't you talk about a little bit about medication and, and what you think, what's your feeling on being medicated to deal with things like this, like anxiety? I think different treatment modules work for different people. So, <clears throat> some people respond better to drugs. Some people respond better to natural remedies. I think a lot of it depends on the person. But I think there's situational anxiety and there's anxiety that 
is persistent to be a life for people. And so I think it depends on the type of anxiety. Because I have friends who have anxiety when they fly. Right. I have friends. But see, but that's what I said before. That goes back to assuming something terrible is going to happen. Why can't you just assume that instead of something bad happening when you're flying, that things are just, you're going to get to your destination without crashing? Because if it was easy as saying, why can't you? And doing the answer to why can't you? The world would be a different place. Right. So, so that's because what I'm saying. Everyone would do the right, the thing that will yield the positive results. So that's it. But humans are not wired like that, John. No, but, that, but that's what I'm saying. Like that. That's what I'm saying. So why can't. can't somebody let let somebody think to themselves? Let somebody think to themselves, okay, I'm feeling really anxious. I'm getting on a plane. Let me assume that I am going to get to my destination because safely. Your brain does not work that way. So, but part of that is trying to retrain your brain. To think differently so that it's safer and healthier for you. That's, That's my right. point. And there are many psychologists who recommend this form of awareness, but it takes a lot of discipline. And when you're tired or things are not working out for you, you default back to the formative wiring. And then you go back to you the worrying. And I know because I try things a lot of this. And there's sometimes when I feel like, I'm on my game and I've conquered whatever. And there are times when I feel like, crap, I'm back here again. But pointing out to people that they can rewire their thought process, I think is healthy because I don't think people realize that they automatically default to the bad as opposed to the good. Jonathan, if I came up to you and you had a situation and said, Jonathan, you can't think that way anymore. This is how you should think of it. Well, that's what a therapist does. This way. It will get better. Isn't that what a therapist tries to get people to do? I don't believe in therapists, so I don't go. Well, neither do I, and I've never gone to one, but I assume that that's. You can't make decisions on what they do. I think it's everything is unique to the situation. Well, speaking of anxiety and disturbing things, so I had some company. This was so weird, such a weird experience. I had some company over for lunch on the Sabbath a couple of weeks ago. And um, it was my son's friend, his wife, and this other friend of mine's daughter and a friend that she brought. And we talking, everybody at the table, like all of the guests, had like some, I guess we'll call it instability issues or depression issues or whatever. It was a very interesting mix of people. So we're having this really nice meal, home-cooked meal. Everything's delicious. Everyone's loving the food. And the conversation starts. And this guy, one of this guy... <laughs> Who, who we never met before, but my friend's daughter brought him along. He was talking about his um, about his life, and he's gone through a lot of trauma and things like that. And the conversation led to people. He said something about being suicidal, and I'm like, "Well, I mean, you're not suicidal, right? Like at the second at the table, are you?" He was like, "No, no, no." He goes, "But I had a situation where I had an accident, a car accident." And he goes, um, and my father was really annoyed at me about the car accident. So he goes, and I tried to diffuse my father's anger at me by having him feel bad for me. So he, so he goes, what I told my father was that I had the accident on purpose because I was suicidal. He goes, so they put me in this, they carted me away because I told him that. The police take that obviously very seriously. And they put me in a, in a mental hospital for two weeks. And while I'm in that mental hospital, he's talking about his experience there. And, he's talk and this other guy at the table goes, oh, wait a second. Did they give you those really, really small spoons? And the guy's like, yeah, you know about the spoons? He goes, yeah, yeah. He goes, and they don't give you knives, right? And they, all of a sudden, they start conversing about their experiences in the mental ward. And then this other girl's like, oh, yeah, yeah, I know. Didn't they also? And she starts talking about her. I go, okay, everyone stop. Please raise your hand at this table if you have not been institutionalized for suicidal thoughts. There were more people with suicidal thoughts at that table at that meal than weren't. How disturbing is that? John, we live in a very strange time. So the fact that a lot of people are suicidal or think suicidal thoughts do not does not surprise me because there's it's so sad. much unprecedented stuff happening in the world right now. And I feel bad for young people because they're coming into it and they don't they haven't lived the lives we have lived, which was a little bit more normal um, when you define normal. But how common are anxiety disorders in a given year? Specific phobias 
eight to 12% of people suffer from this. Social anxiety disorders, which That's a big I one, think is really common, right. 7%. Panic disorder, 2%. Arabophobia, Agora, agoraphobia. I have a hard time pronouncing this. Word. That's fear of spiders. No. Or being home alone. Being or something? out in open spaces. Um, nine percent adolescents and adults suffer from this. I think I have that. I don't like large crowds. I don't like open spaces. I don't like being in places where I can't be close to an exit. Generalized anxiety disorder. Two percent. And separation anxiety disorder, 90%. I have that. Separation anxiety, I have that. When I'm not doing the podcast, I feel a lot of anxiety. And then women generally experience anxiety more than men. Yes, I believe that. Which I thought was very interesting. It is interesting. When I'm not in front of this microphone next to you, I feel very a lot of anxiety. This is the only time I feel, actually feel comfortable. Maybe we can call you Lyot and in addition to <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> Why don't you tell people the new name you gave me? The man calls. My very man angry calls. podcast partner today. Angry. Is Ronton. <laughs> when you enter the studio, <laughs> I start become. I become agitated, over, overly anxious, and not until you leave do I calm down. Really. True, honestly. Yeah. I've been told to have that effect on people. Are you sure it's not the lack of air conditioning in here that's, that sets you off like that? It's hot as hell in this studio. But they recommend that people get down professionally diagnosed because a lot of people don't realize that something is off and they don't get treated. What do you need professional diagnosis? It's pretty obvious. If someone says like, oh, I don't want to be in that crowd. I okay, you have social anxiety. Oh, I don't want to be home alone. Okay, you have fear of loneliness. It's pretty easy to diagnose. Pretty, I grew up in a very rural area in the boondocks of South America, and I had anxiety my entire life. Okay, and you didn't know you had it? And I did not know what was wrong with me. What? It's preposterous. How, do you, how did you not know? Why do you make these blanket statements when you are so limited on knowledge of what you're blanketing? It's so annoying. What, are you going to hit me? You look like you're going to hit me. I don't hit. I'm not violent. You hit me before. What are you talking about? Are you getting nightmares now, John? You always you smack me. When you dream crap, don't associate <laughs> it with me, please. I would like to congratulate my daughter. On graduating from college, if you don't mind, can I take a daughter as well? Very proud. Can I take a moment to uh, under good and welfare? I think on every podcast we should have a good and welfare segment where we talk about good things and positive things that have happened in uh, in our lives. I would like to um, congratulate my daughter Courtney, who graduated Queens College with a four point oh GPA, perfect GPA. But I have to tell you something: we went to graduation. When was the last time you were at a college graduation? It is so disturbing, these graduations. Can I walk you through a graduation, or are you, you just not interested? Anything positive? No. Do you? No, generally not. No. I've gone to many graduations, and I've always walked away feeling elated for the young kids who've worked so of course hard you know. they actually graduate. Of course, because you're a liberal. <laughs> Here's the problem why you and I could only do podcasts together peacefully. Everything, well, even this isn't peaceful. You said it caused too much anxiety for you. No, because you know why? You see the glass half empty, I see the glass half full. You know that minorities do not have the ability to behave at a graduation? Did you notice that when you went to graduation? No, it's true. I know many minorities many cannot behave in the movie theater and they cannot behave at graduation. All they do is yell things out and scream. But, and by the way, John, you know, I have to say this and I didn't want to say it on the podcast. The Jews are minorities, by the way. The Jews are minorities. I think you are in some hierarchy. Jews are minorities. Jews are the only minority that behave at a graduation, though. We are minorities. It's mostly the people, a lot of the, the black people, the black people. I do not call anybody minorities, John. Well, if you're less of they're, you than more, and, and there's more of others, then you're a minority. It's not a, it's not a derogatory term. It's a mathematical figure. 
If there's less of what? If there's less of me and more of them, I'm a minority. It's a mathematical figure. It's not a racial thing. Wait, stop. Let's back up. You were speaking about the graduation. Yeah, but I'm going to explain. And you said there were less Jews at the graduation. No, 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 no. I said, why can't minorities behave at the graduation? Why do they always have to yell and scream at the stage and at everything that's going on? Well, maybe for our, the, for the purpose of being politically correct... Would you tell the viewers in what you are referring to as a minority? They're the black people. They can't behave at a graduation. As soon as they're You know, John. As I'm soon as no, but no, no, it's a, it's, it's it's no, it's it's a it's a cultural thing. I'm not saying it's not. They do it at the movies too. They yell and scream what at the theater all the time. They yell, yell and scream at the screen all the time. And like and they're clapping and they're cheering. It's like it's a movie. Just be quiet. Graduation also, it's a moment where everyone's experiencing something fun. They have like and then the, the the graduate the graduate goes on stage and she's twirling and lifting up her dress. Like I don't see what, but what just behave. Why do you have to tell everybody how to be? Are because, they, where they no, no, because that's the protocol for behavior at a graduation. You come up, you go on stage, you collect your thing, you move on. You don't twirl around, lift your thing up, go, yeah, mama, we did it, baby, we did it. That's, that's what they were doing, screaming and yelling at each other. I, I just didn't understand why. And so I was just making a state, an observation. I think minorities should learn to behave. I zip my left, John, because if I say anything, well, then. Okay, okay, so let's talk about the graduation ceremony itself. That was just an observation about minorities. And again, I'm including Jews as minorities, which is we do behave as that way. Cross in the stage to collect the certificate that they worked so hard for. And but everybody worked speak. the same hard. Would you speak? Would you just shut up and let me speak? You just curse at me? Oh, you just curse at me? Listen to me. You are making, and this is my frustration with you. You make judgments about everything. I do. You know what I you know what people are thinking, why they're doing what they're doing. Generally. These kids have worked really hard. And if they feel that this is how they want to express their success, who did they hurt when they did that? Well, it was very interfering in the in the ceremony and inappropriate. First off, I mean, yeah, it was kind of disturbing. Yeah. And you felt like telling them, yes. could you sit down and behave? Yeah. Do this when you get home. You don't have to scream out, oh, we did it together, baby, yeah. Like, wh why? Why? My daughter graduated 4.0. She got up there. She smiled. She took her thing. She took her picture. She moved on. Our family and you are perfect. Do we all know? No, it's an issue of perfect. It's a, it's a matter of behaving in society in certain situations. But let me, let me just tell you, let me tell you how the graduation ceremony starts off. This is the part that was... Listen, I have two daughters who graduated and I've attended many graduation services. I don't need you to tell me how it flows. But every school has their own graduation programs. There's... Control freak. Wait, what was that word you just called? What control you, freak? Yes. No, no, what did you just say? A what control freak? Are you inserting words? No, no, you just you mouthed it control. quietly. You didn't say it loud. Why don't you why don't you not be shy and just say what you just said? It was a horrible, slanderous <laughs> remark. Okay, but let me take you through the graduation. So we get there. This is how it goes. First of all, the guy sounds like he's artificial intelligence, the president of the uh of the of the of the college. He gets up and he's like I would just like to congratulate everyone on this milestone achievement. This is how he talks. It was so ridiculous. Like, are you a robot or are you going to be human? He goes, now, I would also like to say we will call you up by name, but please let us know how you would like to identify. If you would identify as this, we will call you by this. If you identify as that, we will call you by that. And then he goes, he goes, if you are a minority, please raise your hand. And a bunch of minorities raise their hand. And what's clapping? Okay. If you are an immigrant, please raise your hand. Immigrants raise their hand. Okay. Yeah. If you are an immigrant who is transgender or gay and have come out to their family, please raise their hand. Okay. And this just went on and on. It was almost at the point where it's like, if you are an illegal immigrant that took the slot from an American and you came out to your family as being transgender and you came across the border illegally, please raise your hand. It's like, this isn't normal. Why can't we just be like, hey, we're all in this room together. Congratulations, everyone on their achievement. Let's not break people into subcategories and be all disturbing. Congratulations, everyone. Like, why can't these things just be normal? Jenny, are you okay? I'm listening to you, I just found it to be something that was just so out of what I was used you to. Just blew all your hot air now. Am I allowed to voice my opinion? Please. What I just heard. I you? never run out of hot air, but go ahead. 
You are someone over the six or whatever months I've known you, and they're slowly disappearing. It's like 10 months. Go ahead. But the one thing I've noticed about you, you told me that I'm arrogant and that I am uh, conceited. You've alluded to that. Um, because I didn't allude to that. I actually said that you were arrogant, yes. Yes, you said I was arrogant. I was conceited. Yes, yes, yes. You had a lot of choice adjectives that you used to talk about me, right? And I don't... I also said you weren't bad looking. I mean, I did say that too. Jonathan, can we put the point on him? The only thing you can soft soap your way out of this, okay? Okay. And so the one thing that I can tell you <clears throat> that I can't stand about you is your judgments of everyone and how they live, what they think, what they do, how wrong it is, and why the way you and your family do it is the only good way. Let's do my Every family. Other way is not appropriate. No, I'm just saying these these comments were so weird. Like, why why are we segregating people first of all into categories, and why are we celebrating Which things? Why did they say anyone who is a U.S. citizen that graduated and paid their tuition and studied hard, please raise their hand? What's the point of saying? All the immigrants whose first time generation graduating from college, please, like the, the priorities are all mixed up. It's always to make other people feel good instead of like the mainstream people to feel good. That's what bothers me. A lot of things bother you. A lot. You don't see why that would be bothersome to me? You know what, gentlemen? Sitting here with me, with you, bothers me. Okay? So you go, you live life. I don't get to control what goes on in the world. I don't well, I felt like telling the guy, shut the hell oh, up. You don't have to fuck me up. I'm oh, sorry. Why do you invite me to do this podcast with you when you just want me to sit here? To no, I actually value. To fill in the gap when you no, don't I value what you say. Of information. I never run out of information. Then keep speaking. No, I mean, people, you have notes. Let's let's get to your notes. You have a lot of interesting things to say. No, no, no. Go ahead. Let's get graduation. No, no I, I, I finished with that. We can move on. So Jonathan, here's how you and I are different. Let people be who they are. The world is made up of all types. And as long as what you are doing is not hurting someone, killing them, you be you. Yes. And, and I know. We that talked we about that in the last rules. podcast. And I know that there's, uh, we have rules, and these rules are supposed to help to keep us in some form of orderliness and maintain some law and order. But we are living in unprecedented times. Every time is an unprecedented time. When it's in the, when is it not unprecedented? So Jonathan, why don't they make the world the way you see it? Because you know everything. Now you're talking my language. Yeah. You, I don't have the ability to do that, unfortunately. Well, you should take up government. You take up office in government and you should in fact change. Would you vote for me? The... <laughs> yeah. But you're telling me I should run for government for a political office. Would you vote for me? I'm just asking. Jonathan, I believe in someone who allows people to be who they are without judgments. And you cannot help yourself. You judge everyone, even me. You call me Arrogant. I am everything I talk about. Okay, so let's give it. Don't interrupt me. Ask. <laughs> Why do you whisper the profanities? Why can't you just say the profanities proudly? Say the profanities proudly. Say it. Be a man and say it. Because I have really decent people that watch my show and I don't want to disappoint them. Well, why don't you tell but me that? I would have you, toned it down a little bit. You. I thought we have all animals that listen. I don't know how your wife feels with you, but no, I'd call her and ask her, but she doesn't want to be on the podcast. I have any interest in calling her to ask her. But listen to me. No, that's nice. You need to understand something. You do your life. Let people do theirs. How are they in being who they are affecting you? Because it's insulting to me at the graduation when they say things like that. It's insulting to me. Why do you have to point out immigrants? Why do you have to point out my... Why can't we all just be the same? Why can't it just be like, we're all graduates? Half the conversations I have with you, the Jews this. They're doing this to the Jews. They're understanding. You don't see yourself. You don't hear yourself. You are so high... Well, I'm a victim. Jews are victims. Frightened. 
It is so annoying, Jonathan. I don't know if I love or hate you sometimes. No, no, no. You hate me. I do. It's hard to love someone who is so Mr. Hierarchy. We do. It. We know it. We do it right. It's not oh, hierarchy. It's nothing to do with hierarchy. <laughs> So you have a lot of anxiety. You see, your anxiety is coming out here. No, I'm not anxious at all. I'm actually... You're angry. sweating. You are sweating right because now. Because I... You, may you want me to dab your forehead? Be thinking this is here, right. I'll dab your forehead. Come here. Jonathan, Come here, I'll wipe mine first. And then sometime before you leave the planet, you wake up. <laughs> because you are not better than anybody because you are some... Whatever. Nobody said anything about being better or worse. I'm pointing out an observation. So let me ask you a question then. You just sat there and talked about how the minorities reacted at their graduation, yes. where they worked very hard. Everybody worked hard. John, you get upset at anybody who is proud of that. When I talk about things I've done, it irritates you. Ah. No, and let me finish. Thank you for that lead in. Now we're going to get into that. Go ahead. Finish your sentence. Blow your the rest of your hot air, and then let me pick up. Jonathan, the air. I'm a woman. I'm a single woman, and I've done things that you can only dream of. And you get angry when I talk about. There goes opinion. the arrogance again. I am entitled to my. Let's opinion. read your resume. I have your resume here. Can we read your resume? Everything. Such on an my arrogant list. resume. I'm not giving you an answer. <laughs> you can read my resume all you want. Let's see yours. Let's see yours. I don't have a resume. Of course. You because know why? I've been at the same job for 29 years making a really good living. What do you need a resume for? So I need a resume because I am someone who wants to learn and master as much as I can while I'm on the planet. It makes me wrong it. When I ask you to do something as simple as edit a show, I'll teach you. Oh, I don't know how to do that. There's very little that I say I don't know how to do. No, I'm just asking, why do I have to? I don't, I, you should find that answer out. Because five-year-olds five year olds can do it. You're very cute when you get angry. Did anybody ever tell you that? Jonathan, can we wrap this up? I, I think it's, I'm, I'm done. Do you ever have a pet? Wouldn't it be funny if, if, I, if you had a pet and you named the pet Peeve? And, so, and then it was a pet Peeve. Anyway, Jonathan cannot help being an idiot. So I will bring some seriousness to this before we wrap up. And interestingly, studies have shown that people experiencing anxiety should avoid caffeine as this can worsen their symptoms. You can help cope by managing your stress, by trying meditation, getting yourself into some support groups, and medication. Personally, that would be my last choice. If I what, medication would be your last choice. Anxiety. Medication. I'm just clarifying. Medication would be your last yes. choice. Okay, I agree with you. So, if you suffer from severe anxiety and you are interested, you can find a clinical trial for anxiety by going to clinicaltrials.gov. I hate just sitting here and having these discussions and not leaving you with some tools. To help you if you're someone struggling with this or suffering or if you're not sure just try to get yourself connected with one of the above mentioned resources and see if you feel better after meeting with them and one other thing i think that we should cover before we wrap up and i know john has a research this so i'll just mention it because i think it's important that anxiety and panic attacks sometimes can be confused so I wanted to point out the differences, if you're interested. The difference, be, the differences between anxiety and panic attacks is that anxiety has certain stressors that trigger anxiety attacks, and they may build up gradually. So with you, in, in each individual case, you should identify what those are so that you would know when you're actually having one of them. And then panic attacks come on suddenly and involve intense, often overwhelming fear. They're also accompanied by very challenging physical symptoms like race and heartbeat, shortness of breath, and nausea. So check and make sure that if you have any of these, you're getting help to cope with them. That was very well said. 
that was like really professional. No, I'm not being sarcastic. That was really good. That was things and very helpful resources that uh, that you provided. And I think the purpose of a podcast should be partially entertaining and partially educational. And I think that was uh, very well said on that uh, wrap up. And by the way, just for the record, it is segment 17. I just went to go check. Do you have anything else to say? Not anything that you apparently want to hear. So I'll just... It's not about me. I'm not you. I will be arrogant. I will show off. I can give a rat's ass who wants to die. Oh, well, I was going to give the example of you being arrogant, but you didn't want to hear it. I have worked very hard on my own to accomplish everything I have in my life and everything on my resume. I have worked hard to get it there. And I'm proud of my accomplishments. And I see no reason why I shouldn't boast of my accomplishments. My whole goal for doing that is to encourage someone and to let people realize if they're not, that you can do anything that you really set your mind to. Because some of what I've done, even I look back sometimes, and I can't believe I've done You're amazed at yourself sometimes? Would you like to say anything before we wrap? No, I, I would just like to say that um, I think if you go back to the beginning of the podcast, it, we, we did touch on some methods of, uh, of tempering anxiety and ways that maybe could change a thought process to be less anxious. Because in all honesty, anxiety does affect almost every aspect of your life. It, it's not physically healthy. It's not emotionally healthy. It's not mentally healthy. And it has a lot of negative connotations um, that manifest themselves into your daily life. So if you have a way of managing, controlling, or altering that behavior, I think it would be something that would really uh, make a meaningful difference. Again, like Jenny said, some people will do it with medication. That should be the last resort. Um, speaking to a, a, a psychologist, psychiatrist, a therapist, whatever it is, or even just a friend, sometimes it's helpful reaching out to someone when you know maybe they have something... Um, helpful that they could add. Maybe they went through a similar experience or had the same feelings and emotions and can give you some guidance or some tools or some resources on how to deal with it. Um, but uh, it, it's it's a serious issue. And again, we're here to have fun. We're here to joke around and have a good time, make people laugh and entertain. But there's also, um, you know, a serious aspect to it. If we could provide some of that uh, some of that thought process, that that's what we're here to do. So, Jenny, thank you again for having me on segment 17. And uh, we hope to be back for segment 18 and to continue our uh, our series of How Can You Say That? You have been listening to How Can You Say That? A podcast where we are raw and authentic. And we thank you for listening. And hopefully we will be back with another segment soon. We will. Good thank night. Thank you. Good night.